All right, today I wanna to take a look at a hydraulic system, which is made up of an input cylinder and an output cylinder, which are connected by a fluid filled line. Now each cylinder has a moving piston, which can move up and down within the cylinder. And on one side of that piston, there's confined fluid. Uh, this could be water or brake fluid or, or any type of hydraulic fluid. Uh, the big important idea here is that this fluid is not compressible. So this is not a pneumatic system, which is filled with air, it's hydraulic, it's filled with liquid. And what we're gonna do in this problem is put an input force on this moving piston within our input cylinder. And as a result, this output cylinder is going to move and is going to produce some output force. Now the first idea we need to understand in finding the mechanical advantage of this system is something called Pascal's Law. And that is that if we have a fluid which is contained within a system, the pressure at all points in that system is going to be the same. That means that if this piston right here pushes downward on the fluid over here, the fluid in this cylinder is going to have the same pressure as the fluid within this cylinder. Now I know there's some you know, engineers out there who are gonna say, yes, there's head loss through this pipe. I can think of at least one, but you know, in this problem, we're just gonna keep this simple. We're gonna say Pascal's law applies and there is no head loss or friction within this pipe or in any of these cylinders. So in order to apply Pascal's law to this problem, we need to look at pressure. And pressure is given by force divided by area. And so if we put a force on this piston, it has a certain size or a certain diameter, which I put here of one centimeter. And so there's going to be some pressure that is generated inside this fluid. And that pressure is going to be transmitted through this line to this output cylinder. And that pressure is then going to act upward against this output piston. This output piston has a diameter of two centimeters. So in solving for the mechanical advantage of the system, it's important that we realize that the pressure on each piston is the same. So I'm gonna say the pressure on the input side equals the pressure on the output side. Now substituting in this force over area for pressure we get force in over area in equals force out over area out where the areas are simply the areas of these two piston faces. Now, if we wanna get mechanical advantage out of this, let's back up to what mechanical advantage actually is. Now you'll remember, mechanical advantage in a simple machine is given by F out over F in. And we can apply the same equation to a hydraulic system consisting of two cylinders in order to look at how much force there's going to be in compared to how much force there is out. You'll notice in looking at this equation, we can rearrange this for F out over F in. That is to say, we can rearrange it for mechanical advantage. And in doing that, we're going to have some areas related to each other also. So in moving this over here and this area out over here, what we'll get is the mechanical advantage in a hydraulic system like this is given by this equation, the area of the output piston divided by the area of the input piston. So now that we have this equation, let's go through and work out the mechanical advantage of this hydraulic setup. We've been given the diameter of each of these pistons, and so we need to solve for the area of each of these. Now knowing the area is given by pi r squared, we can apply this equation to each piston individually. So starting with the input piston, we find the input piston has an area of 3.14 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. And you take sig figs just as far as you feel like here. That's up to you. For our output piston, and we find the output area is 12.6 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. Now, yes, I know in the strict rules of scientific notation, we shouldn't write this this way. It's okay. Everything will be fine. Just bear with me for a second. You'll see why I wrote it this way. Using this equation, we know mechanical advantage is given by area out divided by area in. So that's gonna be the 12.6 times 10 to the negative fourth over 3.14 times 10 to the negative fourth. 
and we find the mechanical advantage is four. So now that we have the mechanical advantage of this system, let's put a known force on this input cylinder and see just how much force comes out. So if there's 20 newtons of input force on this piston, that's gonna produce some pressure inside of this cylinder, uh, and that pressure is gonna be transferred through this fluid to the output cylinder, and thus that pressure is gonna act on this output piston. So using a mechanical advantage of four, we can now solve for our output force. And we find the output force is 80 newtons. Now, just like with any simple machine, when we multiply the force, we have to give up something. In this case, that's displacement. Now, there's several ways to explain why that is with this hydraulic system, but ultimately what's happening is as this piston moves downward, it pushes a certain volume of fluid out of the input cylinder, and that same volume of fluid moves into the output cylinder. But because this input cylinder has a smaller cross-section or a cross-sectional area, it's gonna to have to move further to push a certain volume of fluid out of here than this piston is going to have to move in order to accept that volume of fluid. Or to put it a different way, we can talk about work. And you'll remember work is given by force times displacement. So if we push on this input piston over a certain distance, it's gonna do some work. So let's go through and have this piston move downward a distance of say five centimeters. So as this piston moves downward five centimeters, some work will be done. So the work done on the input side is going to be the input force, that's 20 newtons, multiplied by the input distance, or 0.05 meters. On the output side, this piston is gonna move up. I wanna solve for how far it's going to move. Now we know the output work, or the work done on the output piston is going to be the output force, that's 80 newtons, times the distance the output side is gonna travel. We'll just call that D out. And I'll use capital D because we already used little d for diameter here. Now, if this is a perfect system and there's no frictional losses in this system from steel drag or head loss through the system, we're gonna be able to say the input work is equal to the output work. Now, our work in works out to be exactly one joule. So I'm gonna say this input work is one joule. And that's gonna be equal to 80 newtons multiplied by our output displacement. And we find the output displacement is 0.0125 meters. So ultimately what we've seen in this problem is that when we press on this input piston, it produces a pressure inside this fluid. And because of Pascal's law, that pressure is evenly transferred to this fluid in the output cylinder, which then pushes on this output piston. And as a result, we produce a mechanical advantage just like we would with a simple machine. And knowing the mechanical advantage, we can solve for both the output force and output distance for a hydraulic system like this. And on that note, that's all for now.